Welcome back to the Tennessee Frugal Craftsman. It is March the 10th. It's been a few days since I posted. I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about uh, some mill maintenance I did here and some upgrades, um, especially on the ability to cut longer pieces of lumber. And so I've been listening to what you've been saying, the, uh, the comments, and uh, some of you noticed on the last uh, video that I posted that there was a little bit of rollback on the uh, on the mill and that was because I knew it was getting a little unlevel I had been uh, milling some bigger logs and it's bound to settle when I'm just setting on piers here so I'm going to show you what I did and uh, bring you up to speed in a short video so I went ahead and cleaned out around my mill and uh, cleared all of the debris out that you know as much of it as possible and I went and uh, re-leveled everything. It was out just a bit. It was it was sagged down a bit, a, a little bit in the middle. It wasn't too too severe. Nothing that you know was going to be a major problem for my for my milling. But I just wanted to do the maintenance while I was doing some other stuff on the mill. I also re-leveled the head. It was out a little bit. And the major project that I did today was you can see right here is I actually put a four foot extension on the tracks here and I'll zero in and, and talk through it here in a minute but uh, right now with all the extensions I had purchased the extension for this mill when I bought the mill from Woodlands so I could do the longer stuff so it comes like a six foot nine extension uh, that allowed me to do approximately sixteen foot nine pieces but when you're rolling up 16 foot lumber on this, it's pretty hard to actually keep everything, uh, get be able to mill when you're that close to the to the head, especially in here trying to measure, trying to get everything just right. So when I'm working by myself, if I'm rolling a 16 foot log up here, I want to have a little bit of clearance and leeway to work with my head. So what I did is I put this four foot extension on and that allows my head actually to come back all the way and freeze up an extra uh, four feet of track here and it also allows me for the most part to do up to a 20 foot 9 piece uh, I'm not sure I'll actually be doing that but when I roll a 6 foot 6 uh, piece of lumber up here I can actually have lots of lots of leeway here to to move it around and so I'll show you what I did uh, it's not a major, a major change as far as being difficult. Uh, what I did is I had originally when I put the piers in, I had extended my my uh, piers out here four feet because I knew I was going to do this track eventually. Now I'd done a little bit of uh, toying with the idea: could I actually do a hardwood track or whatnot? And that just wouldn't work. So I went to uh, home or to Lowe's and picked up a couple two-inch by two inch quarter inch angle iron uh, they run about thirty five thirty six dollars a piece so with tax I've got about eighty dollars in and now the regular extensions obviously are, are better but you're gonna spend close to four hundred dollars for it and for what all, all I needed I thought this would work fine and so what I did is I leveled now from this point on because this is set on uh, these are set right on uh, hardwood blocks. Whenever I level the mill, I'm going to have to level from this point on out uh, because this shouldn't move that much. Uh, if anything, you know, this this is not where a lot of the weight is. It's just the head. It's down on the other end where you get a lot of the weight when you're dealing with your logs because that's where you're rolling up and flipping them back and forth. But back here shouldn't be too bad. Uh, so I'll always have this is all level like I said I re-leveled everything each way lengthwise and uh, crossways and then what I did is after I got it leveled this morning I came in and I wanted to make sure that these were the exact same height which they are they're they're running right on uh, then I did I made these blocks the difference of the two inch plus the height here so it was like five and a quarter so I made these three and a quarter and this is two and so when I uh, screwed it down everything came right in smooth now obviously if you got a little bit off you could shim in underneath here because this hardwood block 
uh, it's not going to be moving that much. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty solid piece of wood. And then I, I drilled and I, I toenailed a, along here with uh, some two and a half inch deck screws. So this block is secure. Then what I did on the inside, and this is going to be the same for both of my, my tracks, I drilled uh, five holes, one, two, three, four, five holes, and I put five sixteenths inch lags. Now these are only about inch and a half. You could go down to two, go up to two, or more. But this is for all that's on. That this is going to hold it fine. Um, I'll keep you posted if anything changes. But now it's setting on a solid base. This, these tracks are level, and they're right in line. And I also ran when I put my tracks on. What I did is I ran a straight edge right across from that other track down there so everything is running straight and then I just measured measured across the 26 inches roughly what those tracks are wide and bolted everything down like I said make sure everything is straight and level and when I bolted that down um, it worked fine it's given me the clearance I need because you got this end bunk you can actually extend a log out over that if you had to which will give me that extra room but I'll just roll this back here and you can see kind of what's going on and that goes all the way back as you can see there so like I said I've got that extra in there Come back here to the end. Now, as far as the, just the bumpers, I just put, obviously I'm not gonna treat this too violently, but I just did some hardwood bumpers on it because I had taken the bumpers that were off the from the factory. And like I said, if you're careful with this, this will work fine. I'm, I, I work here by myself, so I can uh, uh, take it really easy on that. But everything is rolling right along, as you can see. And having leveled the track, everything should be good to go. And leveled, leveled this, leveled the head, put a new blade on it. So I'm ready to do, to do some more milling. And maybe I will uh, set up here, if I can get a log up on the, on the uh, sawmill. I'm, I've got everything milled out now. So I'm ready to take the next step and get some more uh, logs up here. And so... I'll keep this video short, and uh, I just wanted to give you an update of how, you know, a little bit of mill maintenance, but also how uh, you can do a cheap extension. Like I said, I wouldn't suggest going beyond probably that four feet. You could go six. Uh, the issue is uh, then you you're having to you'd have to put some type of a log bunk in, which is which is doable. You could always put like a hardwood bunk in if you wanted to do it cheaply. But anyway, that's. Uh, one of the easier ways I found to do it and you could always put an extension on the other end if you wanted uh, go out there another four feet but I think every I've got my length now that I need to mill anything I need for the house and so just thought I'd bring you up to up to date on that I always thank you for joining me and spending some time with me and I pray that you have a great day and if you like what you're seeing please like and subscribe Tell some friends and uh, we will catch you on the next video.